Hey everyone, today you get to see me experiment a little bit. I'm doing a different take on my resin raindrop soaps and the twist that I mentioned in the title doesn't come till about two thirds of the way through when I decide to play around with another technique. Um, quickly to jump in where I am on the video is I'm pouring about two thirds, maybe a little more um, of a clear soap pre-scented, I'm not pre-scented, but just not on camera. I'm pretty sure I used aloe water and sea kelp. If it's different than that, I will put it in the description. The, um, the Obviously, this is time-lapsed, so it was set up fully before I began taking the pipette and uh, creating a design on the two-thirds soap. It was fully, fully set up. It wasn't cold. And when I'm piping like this with a little little pipette, I use very hot soap. Um, I don't take it beyond a point where the soap is boiling or it's going to ruin the integrity of the soap. But I keep it around 135. Now, um, that may not be hot for your soap base, but for my soap base, that's quite hot. I'm using premium uh, crystal clear from Crafter's Choice Wholesale Supplies Plus, not an affiliate. Um, I don't know, maybe someday I'd sure love to, but, uh, I, I adore their soap bases. So that's just my personal choice. If you use a different soap base, just make sure you know what the melting point is and apply it fairly warm or hot, be, uh, without ruining your base, of course, because you want that soap to stick. Um, I did not, um, I, I spritzed, oh goodness, I spritzed the soap but I didn't spritz it right before I applied this. And you will see in um, one section of this, you'll see me spritz once. Uh, and I did it a little too soon. It didn't ruin the soap, but it could have. So I just wanna warn you, if you do this technique, wait until the drawing part sets up fully, or at least mostly, before you spritz it, because it will cause the soap to spread, which will make your design spread out even if you don't want it to. Um, I started upside down and flipped it because um, it's difficult to see up underneath the edges of this oval shape. I love, love, love this mold. And as try as hard as I can, I cannot find the exact same oval. Um, I have some that are very similar, but they're just not as smooth and shiny and perfectly oval as these. Um, I remember a couple of times saying that no matter what I put in this soap, it turns out beautiful. That's not totally true, and I've disproven that a few times to myself. But most of the time, you put something in these ovals, it's going to be pretty. It just is a great, uh, great shape and, um, and a great mold. So um, I, I don't know it, how much you can see about what shapes I'm putting in there and designs. But um, you will see when it's turned over and you'll probably see some as uh, as I apply mica to it once it's set up because I'm going to put the colorant behind. Don't forget the bottom is the front of the soap and that's why it is clear. We want a nice kind of shiny almost a paperweight look to this and the decoration and design goes toward the back. Um, it's like I said, it's a twist on the raindrop soap that I made a while back, the raindrop resin technique that a lot of resin artists use. And I'm sorry if you hear my cat. <laughs> he wants in. He's not coming in right now. <laughs> um, but uh, I do add a different technique to it later. And I, because I decided to do it sort of last minute, um, as, as actually a technique I've been wanting to try, but I wasn't initially going to try it over top of these. Um, I want to do it again later and better because I know I can. Um, what you're seeing right now, I just keep a little disc of soap that I had from the bottom of a pot and I use it to test out micas on black because it makes a difference uh, what the micas are on and for these soaps and for the resin soaps you'll even see if you ever follow any resin tutorials I don't make resin I just like what they do and it's a very similar medium in some ways um, so I like to watch for 
ideas, for inspiration, for just different ways to look at techniques. Um, and this technique, very specifically, uh, all the resin artists I've seen and the other soapers I've seen too, you really want to do the second part of it, which will fill the rest of the mold, with black, with really nice dark black soap. I use activated charcoal. I have not yet used black mica for this effect, but I am going to try that because I think it will work just as well if you add enough for it to be opaque. The main thing is, is you're not wanting the light to shine through. So if you, uh, if you try this and you want to experiment around with using different colors, and I might even do that on film sometime for you, but I would I would suggest sticking to as dark of a color as you can because and and make it opaque at least because you want it you don't want the light to shine through um, or ref yeah it's more of a reflective it changes the way the mica reflects the light I hope I said that all right because I'm also trying to figure out what's going on with my cat um, the uh, mica that you see me painting now I will speed this up in a minute I'm taking my time with it for a second because you'll see me make a little bit of a mistake and I want to show you how I correct that because uh, to me that's the most important part of applying this is number one making sure you get full coverage and I'll talk about that a little bit more when I get a little further along um, the more reflective mica you can use whether it's um, duochrome or a shift mica or something that even just a interference mica which is kind of just the iridescence when you see it shine another color uh, in the background um, those to me show this technique off the best but as you see right now I'm getting ready to use oh well no that one's just snow white um, I'm going to be using um, a mica in a minute that is just a regular old mica, but it's very metallic and it catches the light brilliantly. If you look up in the right hand corner, you'll see my first experiment with this. This was me kind of, I've been wanting to play with moving away from the raindrops in my raindrop soap and trying something else, trying a different pattern. And the reason I was thinking this is when I did the raindrop soaps, I initially... Ah, uh, wait, real quick. Here comes my fix. I just squirted that brush with alcohol, with 91% alcohol, and I'm using that to remove my mistake. Once, and this is a really important to this technique as well, is you want to put down the color first that you want to see on the other side. Yes, you can put uh, another layer over or... Um, yeah, and move the mica around a bit, but whatever touches that soap first is going to stay there, and that's what's going to be seen. Um, so as you're as you're choosing your colors, choose wisely, and know that if you're going to alter what you've put down, do that by removing the other mica first, or you're just going to see what was already there. I don't know if that makes sense, but um, hopefully you saw there where I removed it with the alcohol I was removing white that I did not want there and I ended up putting over it a gold um, no no I'm wrong I put a uh, white where I didn't want it and now I'm coming back in I've sped it up because now I'm past the part that I really needed to get uh, out and not forget to tell you about um, that fix but I'm coming back in with blues and greens I don't know if you figured it out by now I'm working upside down again uh, to get under the lip under the the clo more closed part of the oval shape and I'm working with blues and greens there because that's the sea the ocean the beach it's I think you can kind of get that impression from looking at it I don't know because I'm looking at a smaller version right now but uh, maybe you can picture it. I tend, tended to use the green closer to shore, which is where I had that white going. I was just touching along the lines I used to make the shoreline. 
and a little bit on the waves, giving them a little bit of a crest look on some of the waves. I, I was kind of sloppy about it on purpose because one thing you might, you'll see with these is it doesn't have to be perfect. It does have to be all colored. You don't want to leave anything without mica on it. Um, you'll, you might see a couple of little tiny, tiny specks and spots where I missed when we come in close for the photography at the end, we zoom in and it's never going to be that close for you to see it, um, in person, <laughs> most likely, uh, unless you have microscope, microscope eyes, um, or wear an extremely strong prescription or look at it under a micro, um, uh, not microscope magnifying glass and hopefully you won't be doing that to all of my soaps um but there's little specks just tiny tiny little specks where it missed um ways to avoid that is using um very fine mica powder the finer the better it will it just gets better coverage to make sure in the following steps that you'll see me go through with a larger brush really make sure that a you're getting under every crevice because every line that you put in for your design and I honestly don't think the design matters too much uh, you can make whatever you want I like to choose designs that are more forgiving like this if I were drawing like a cat or something more very specific I not sure I could do that <laughs> this is a little more forgiving because you need, when you look at a sunset there's so many different interpretations of what you can see and the lines aren't um, so specific that they have to be perfect. There's clouds moving in the sky. There's color, different colors. There's rays coming from the sun sometimes. There's so many different ways that you see a sunset um, being created in the sky. And so same goes with soap. I can kind of, it gives me a little wiggle room. And I like that. I like designs that do that because I am not um, perfect but I am kind of a perfectionist. So if I'm going to make mistakes, I want them to work. Um, so what was, well, I interrupted myself when I saw that that design that I was doing the erasing technique and showing you that. What was I talking about at that point? I think I was telling you how important the black was on the back. Maybe that was it. If it wasn't, let me know in the comments and tell me if I forgot something. But um, overall, you want to make sure the coverage is good. Go on either side of every line that you have because that forms a little crack there. Um, it's not loose away from the soap unless you don't um, keep your soap hot enough in the little pipette. Um, I only dipped. No, no. I dipped my pipette, I think, once or twice into the hot soap. But I honestly don't think I had to reheat that the entire time. Now I am using a soap with a lower melting point. Um, I think I already mentioned that. But uh, it, it it really doesn't take that much when you know the design you're creating and you're, you kind of move quickly. Obviously this is sped up and it was even sped up when I was doing the design and drawing it out. I, I was doing freehand. You can probably find some other way to create a design if you wish. Um, I would do, as you saw me starting off, I did all of the little sandy beach area. And then I came back and I did the shoreline itself and some little waves. And then I came back and the reason I was doing it that way instead of making an entire design and then doing another entire design is because it gives the opportunity for those dots, lines, shapes, whatever you've put on the soap to set up before you try to put something else next to it. Because if you do that too soon and it's all still runny and hot, it's just going to mush together in a big ugly shape. And it's, well, maybe not ugly, but it's not going to be what you intended if they run together. So it prevents them from running together when you do it in little bits. Uh, it really dries fast. So you don't need to, you're not waiting around forever. In fact, I didn't even really wait with these because I moved along and added other things to each each little um, cavity there, each soap. Um, huh, I forgot something I was going to say as I was saying that. Um, oh, don't, uh, I think I already said this. Please don't spray it with alcohol right after you put it on. I did say that. Okay. Um, 
Also, don't spray it with alcohol before you pour the, be- the black layer, the back of your soap. It will take the mica off and loosen it and you will get a lot of ugly splotches and um, m- lack of mica in places, at least in my experience. The other thing that can do that as you're pouring um, is if you pour A too high and too forcefully, I guess is the way to put it. You want to pour slow. I know this is sped up, but I do pour slow. Slow and low, and you want to uh, put it over a spatula or a spoon or stir stick or something like that because you want it to spread a little bit as it's pouring. That avoids the soap kind of pouring in one spot because that will wash away the mica. You want to be careful with that. Um, In a moment, you'll see the twist that I'm doing on this soap. And that's after I turn it over and play drums on it for a minute. I'm just trying to pat out some of the mica. But I come back in with a big brush and I am making sure that the mica is spread in every nook and cranny um, and covers everything. And even as much as attention, I think I even cut out some of mine because I think I did it for longer than than before I turned it over the first time. I think I did it for a little bit longer, but you just want to be sure and watch also that the metal barrel or the metal part, I forget what you call that, of your paintbrush doesn't scrape off any like I'm intentionally doing here. Here's the twist. I'm using a stylus and I'm coming back in, not, not a stylus intended for um, computer work. This is an art stylus. I'm coming back in and creating some details um, by pulling mica off when I go to pour the black layer, the design that I'm removing the mica, where I'm removing the mica, you will see black. So because I'm doing that as images that would be in front of the sun from your view, they create a silhouette. So that's all I'm doing here is creating little silhouettes. I did fairly simple shapes, um, a little more intricate on the palm tree, you'll see, but uh, I think I can do, that's the one I think I can really, uh, this part I think I can do a better job of. And I'm going to do that again soon in, a, in another video. I'm going to um, change up the way I'm doing it. And so if you are interested in this and you want to see a little bit of an easier way to get your design in there, um, then maybe wait around for it or feel free to experiment now with it and see because it is a fun technique to play with even if you don't add the twist of a couple of different designs um it's it's really cool like my experiment at the top and I do pull that closer at the end when I'm showing them um up close I do show you the experimental one first um I'm just going back in here and trying to remove a little bit more of the soap where the mica where I was scratching it off I wasn't real neat about it so here's the black soap And I want you to notice I'm pouring first into the soaps that I've removed mica from, that I'm creating a design. Uh, That's, and I'm maybe not even filling. I just want that soap, while it's as hot as it can be, to go into the little crevices I've created with my stylus tool. And then I come back with the rest, and I'm pouring over my little spatula to avoid removing mica and creating big black splotches that I don't want there. Um, obviously this sets up not nearly as quickly as is shown. I'm not going to make you sit around and watch soap dry. Um, but here they are. Um, uh, I, again, I, I have things I would do differently as always. And one of them I will be showing you in the next, not the next, but in a very soon in a video, uh, to c- create cleaner lines. I, I left some mica in there and I just, I wasn't using the right tool. I did some things a, a little bit out of order from what I should have done probably. And um, the the difficult thing with these, you might see me messing with them a lot here as I show them to you, is catching the light right. They looked so incredible when I pulled them out, but when I looked up on camera, it just wasn't catching it. See, when I set them down, you can kind of see the glow, and that comes from having a very high metallic-y, shiny, or shift mica, duochrome, something like that. I will list 
the um, micas I used, they were not all duochrome or shift or even all iridescent, but they're they're very um, very high quality micas, definitely very shimmery. You definitely don't want to use a flat mica, um, that, which they do make, or a matte mica. They make those, and I haven't ever used those in soap because I've never found the need for anything to be matte other than um, titanium dioxide or uh, activated charcoal if I'm wanting a matte white or black. So, yeah, so you put that down, and you see the lines a lot better. You see the colors a lot better, and uh, you will see some close-ups soon. And I think in the close-ups, you'll see a little bit better how there are some just little spots in the black design that could be cleaner and uh, could just could be a little sharper. So I'll be working on that very, very soon. I know exactly how I'm going to do it because I know what I did wrong. So there's that. What else have I left out from this? I love the way these came out. They were so much fun. I do have to practice on making my sun, my semicircle for my sun a little bit better. I'm not good as I pull around from the top down. I don't know. I, for some reason, that part eludes me, like that one. <laughs> and the, the reason I did the experiment and then changed some things um, is I didn't, I wasn't real happy with the color of Micah's I chose for the C on that one because it was, it was too light, too pale. All right, there's, there's the, um, I just sketched that on there. I mean, really, palm trees aren't hard. Um, someday maybe I can help you learn to do those because they're really easy to make. I grew up drawing them just being in Florida and drawing a lot of sunset -y type things. I wish this caught the light a little better. There you see it a little bit more. Where the clear soap was, you really get a reflective 3D image. And it shows, this This was the, like I said, the experiment, experimental one. And it even, it's gorgeous. It just, I wasn't done yet. Just like I'm still not done. I'm always trying to improve. Um, but they all came out beautiful in their own little ways. And... I will definitely be showing you how I improve them on the next time. And if there's any detail or instruction that I left out, or if there's anything you really don't understand about what I did, please put it in the comments and I will, I may not directly answer you or I may, depending if it's a brief answer, but I definitely will address it in the next video I create with these soaps. I'm excited to play around more with this design. I'd love to see what designs you would create because, I mean, you don't need to do sunsets. Y if you draw or can, can create an image or maybe even use a template of some kind, you could make whatever designs you like with whatever colors you like. I will list what colorants I used um, in the description box on this video. If any of you cannot find the description box because I've heard of a few people having difficulties with that, let me know. Maybe I can make a kind of <laughs> a tutorial on where to find that. I'm not good at that kind of tutorial because I'm technically not, not technically savvy. So you see, as you get super close, you're never going to look at your soap that close, but you see the little specks. You see the specks in, in the darker places where I carved out, and you also see specks here, but you don't see that when you're just looking at the soap. Um, the little, little white bits almost look like it could even be a bubble on that one. Um, but it doesn't ruin the soap, and looking at it just as a soap on its own, it looks gorgeous. Um, but me being very super picky, I'm going to try to fix it. <laughs> I hope you learned something, and thanks for sharing your time with me, and I'd uh, love to help you become a better soap maker. Thank you. Bye.